What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another The Sports Scoop video. Today, it is just me, and I'm going to be doing another mock draft video since you guys like them so much. If you enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. If you haven't, we really appreciate it. And yeah, let's get into the video. So with the first pick in the draft, the, ja uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars will select Trevor Lawrence from Clemson. And there's not really much to say. He's a generational talent, possesses everything they really need, arm strength, mobility, accuracy, and intelligence to be a star in the NFL. He's a proven winner at the college level, won a national championship as a freshman, and he's very coachable. This is a slam dunk pick for Jacksonville. Now you got the New York Jets with the second pick. I have him also taking a quarterback. Sorry, Zach Wilson from the University of BYU. He's a very quick in his progressions and can throw the ball from any angle, similar to the Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes of the NFL. He's very hardworking and loves to study film. He's been called a film nerd, which will really help the transition to the NFL. The Jets need a quarterback like this if they want to keep up with the Bills and the Dolphins who have Josh Allen to Tunga Vailoa in the AFC East. Now, speaking of the Dolphins, I have them taking a linebacker Micah Parsons from the University of Penn State. Um, he's fast and strong. He's a typical modern-day linebacker, and the Dolphins really need a linebacker um, in the predicament they're in with losing, possibly losing Cambu Gruger hill and Alanzan Roberts, who are both in contract here. So Brian Flores really likes to develop the defense, and I think this is an easy pick for them. Now going on to the fourth pick, you got the Atlanta Falcons. I have them taking... Gregory Rousseau from the University of Miami. So Rousseau, it's really puzzling to me why he shot down draft boards. He's a very raw prospect. But he has the potential to be one of the best edges in the league if he works on his technique. He had 15 and a half sacks from the a lot from the interior, but I still believe that he has so much potential potential at the NFL level. So the the Falcons would be wise to snag him up. Now with the fifth pick, you got the Cincinnati Bengals. And they will take Penny Sewell from the University of Oregon. He's one of the best tackle prospects in recent memory. He's the perfect for the Bengals, considering they need to protect their young quarterback currently rehabbing from a torn ACL. And Cincinnati, very lucky. They should be thinking their lucky starts that he's available at five, considering he's one of the best prospects I've ever seen. So let's get Penny Sewell right here. Now going on to the sixth pick, you got the Philadelphia Eagles. And with Michael Parsons off the board, in my opinion, this is an obvious pick. They need wide receiver help, and the best ones here. Um, you got Jamar Chase, who has the physical ability to be an immediate star. He's basically a better version of Justin Jefferson. He's had 20 touchdowns um, last season, and he also had 1,700 yards featuring an offense just with Justin Jefferson and Clyde Edwards-Zeller. So I love this pick for Philly, who need help for whoever their quarterback is. Now going on to the seventh pick, you got the Detroit Lions. And I have them taking an edge rusher, Quiddy Pay from Michigan. So the Lions have done a solid job getting their cornerback number one in Jeff Kuda, but they still need some pass rush help. And even on a disappointing Michigan team, I think Pitt Pay is really standing out, and I think he's established himself as a top 10 pick. I think they'd be wise to, as this is for a starting point to rebuild the defense. Now with the eighth pick, you got the New York Giants. I have them taking a wide receiver, Devontae Smith from Alabama. And Smith, um, he might be one of the biggest steals of the draft for New York. He's um, had really no real knocks um, other than he's 175 pounds, but he's I think he really makes up for that with his surefire catching and stellar route running for Alabama. I think um, he right now it's really says something that he is a wide receiver but still arguably the favorite to win the heisman and his intermediate and uh, deep route running should be make him an immediate third down favorite for danny dimes now going to the ninth pick you got the carolina panthers i'm taking the third quarterback off the board justin fields from ohio state so Field slips a bit due to poor performance against teams like Indiana and Northwestern. I think he still one, has one of the best pocket presences in the draft. And because he was the previously consensus number two overall pick, the Panthers won't let him fall, fall past nine. Needs to work on throwing outside the hash marks and quicker progressions. But I still think he has a very high floor and a higher ceiling than players like Dwayne Haskins. I think maybe people are a bit afraid of the – Ohio State quarterback, but I think he's much better than previous quarterbacks taken from that university. Now at the 10th pick, you got the Denver Broncos. I'm taking the cornerback number one of this class. 
um, Patrick Sertain the second. Um, I think he's been very consistent with Alabama and uses physical abilities well. I think obviously they need they need that kind of player who can play man, be very physical, and it's gonna be tough though going against the Tiger Kills and Keenan Allen's of the league who will both be in his division. So I think he'll be a good pair opposite to Michael Ojemudia. They might cut AJ Boye, so I think this is a good pick for Denver. Now going on to the 11th pick, you got the Dallas Cowboys sticking with cornerback. I am taking Caleb Farley from the University of Virginia Tech. And he could have easily been the CB number one, but he just couldn't improve his stock by opting out. He has some of the best physical attributes in the draft, and I think he'll form another scary one to tandem with uh, Trayvon Diggs, who has been very good for Dallas in his rookie year. Now going on to the 12th pick, you got the Los Angeles Chargers. I have them taking an offensive lineman, um, Rashawn Slater from the University of Northwestern. He's an underrated tackle, in my opinion, out of Northwestern. He uh, he passed the eye test by locking down Chase Young last season when they when Northwestern played Ohio State. He's very versatile, can play on all positions of the offensive line. And the Chargers, it's perfect because the Chargers really need to protect their franchise quarterback, Justin Herbert. Now going on to the 13th pick, you got the Minnesota Vikings, another offensive tackle, uh, Christian Dersaw from the University of Virginia Tech. Um, I think he's one of the most um, vaunted tackles in this draft. He's tremendously improved his stock this year. And they already have a tackle in Ezra Cleveland, but I expect Cleveland to move to guard as he has played sometime during this year. I think they need to protect Kirk Cousins and open up holes for Dalvin Cook. And I think Darisaw will really help with that uh, part of the game. Now going on to the 14th pick, you got the New England Patriots. I know, surprising seeing them pick this early. And I have them taking the third wide receiver off the board, Jalen Waddell from Alabama. And I think the reason why is New England have really not had any consistently good wideouts in 2020 and need to add some flair. Waddell, in my opinion, is a more productive, polished version of Henry Ruggs. And that may be a controversial statement, but... In this year, before he uh, had a season-ending ankle injury, he was putting up like 100 yards per game along with Devontae Smith. And I think he's a very scary weapon for whoever uh, gets his hands on him. And I think Belichick right now just can't afford to pass on him with the sputtering offense. First wide receiver, then maybe focus on your new quarterback. Now with the 15th pick, you got the um, San Francisco 49ers. I have them taking another cornerback. Um, J.C. Horn from South Carolina. Um, my, the only cornerback under the, um, on the roster who's under contract for 2021 is Akella Witherspoon. And Shanahan has said openly that Jimmy G will likely be the quarterback for the 49ers in 2021. And J.C. Horn has been one of the toughest corners in the SEC and had a breakout game against Auburn. So I think this makes perfect sense. Fill a need. I think this is exactly where his positional value is. San Francisco get a stud corner, and I think it really would help them build that defense again. Now going on to the 16th pick, you've got the Las Vegas Raiders. I have them taking Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa from Notre Dame. Um, so I think he's very similar to Mike Parsons. He can play fast and strong for linebacker. He's very good at blitzing, which Las Vegas have been doing more and more often. And I think he's that Mike, or he could play Will, also linebacker that um, Las Vegas really need to help reestablish um, an identity on this defense, which has looked poor in recent games. Now going on to the 17th pick, Cardinals, this is a steal in my opinion. They get Kyle Pitts from the University of Florida. Um I think this is my opinion, perfect fit. Some players inexplicably fall down draft boards. Last year it was C.D. Lamb. This year it's Kyle Pitts. For Cliff Kingsbury, though, this is a match made in heaven. Pitts will fit absolutely perfectly into the spread offense, which he played at Florida, and he really is the final weapon that Kyler Murray needs. I expect him to have an immediate impact, and I expect big things from Arizona in 2021. With the 18th pick, you got the Indianapolis Colts. I have them taking a cornerback again, um, Eric Stokes from the University of Georgia. And Xavier, this mainly because Xavier Rhodes is in a contract year and the Colts really need to improve the cornerback position. They already have a good D-line and linebacking core, but they need help on the back end of the defense. And I think get another good cornerback from SEC school. And I think this really works out. I think this would really work out well for Indianapolis. 
Now with the 19th pick, you got the Washington football team. I have them taking a quarterback, Trey Lance, from the University of North Dakota State. And this is why I originally didn't have Washington taking a quarterback. And this is the reason why. Given how well this defense has been playing recently, Washington may be closer to a Super Bowl going Super Bowl game than I first thought. And Trey Lance has one of the highest upsides in the draft. And if he pans out, look out NFC East. They're going to have a stellar defense and an offense that can complement that, led by Lance and Terry McLaurin and Antonio Gibson. So I think this works out all well for Washington. Now with the 20th pick in the NFL draft, you have the Chicago Bears. I have them taking Mac Jones from the University of Alabama. Um, Chicago have really had atrocious QB play for the past few years, whether it's been Mike Lennon, Nick Foles, Mitchell Trubisky, Jake Cutler in his twilight years. This is uh, Chicago had a long-term issue. And I think Mac Jones will be, in my opinion, a stable pick for them. He has not exactly the highest ceiling, but he has a very good floor. And I think he might be one of the earliest starters in 2021. Now with the 21st pick, again, you got the Jaguars on the clock. I am taking an offensive lineman. Samuel Cosby from the University of Texas. I think he's got one of the highest upsides for an offensive lineman after the Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence. They need to immediately build from the inside out. Offensive line first, then supply with wide receivers. They have some of the most cap space in the world, in the league, sorry. And they definitely, but I think the first step is shoring up that offensive line. Now going on to the 22nd pick, you've got the Cleveland Browns. I have them taking an interior defensive lineman. Jay Tufele from the University of USC. And Miles Grade is great and all, don't get me wrong, but he definitely needs a lot of help. And Tufele is a really good multi-purpose interior defensive lineman. He can stuff the run and is great at pass rushing and really what Cleveland needs to help build a good offensive lineman. The foundation is there, but they need a bit more help. Now with the 23rd pick, you got the Miami Dolphins. And this is the time to supply weapons for Tua Tungvaloa. I'm taking Rashad Bateman from Minnesota. I think Bateman's really what Tua wants. He likes those separators like he had in Alabama with Judy, Ruggs, Lamb, and Smith. And Bateman can do that. He can also get a one-on-one ball for when Fitzpatrick comes in, or Tua can throw that too. So I think Bateman is a great, a great fit for Miami right here. Now with the 24th pick, you got the Baltimore Ravens. I have them taking another wide receiver, Terrace Marshall from the University of LSU. And he was, he's very physical wide receiver. He has a large frame and was really good for LSU before he opted out, putting up very stellar numbers in a year where we didn't know what Terrace Marshall would be. It really improved his stock before he opted out. I think this is the receiver that Lamar Jackson really has never had in the NFL and someone he really needs. Like his best one's been Marquise Brown, but he's not really one that you say, here, Marquise, go get it. I think Terrace Marshall could really be that receiver for Lamar. Now with the 25th pick, you got the Tennessee Titans. I am taking Joseph Asai from the University of Texas. And Asai can really play linebacker or edge. He's very good on the weak side of formation, is very talented at stuffing the run. Maybe needs a bit of coaching to help develop his game, but I still like Asai here for Tennessee at 25. Now with the 26th pick, you got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I have them taking Liam Eichenberg from the University of Notre Dame. Sorry about that. Um, I think opposite to Tristan Wirfs, Eichenberg will help um, keep Brady upright. I think they have some good pieces, like I said, Wirfs, Ali Marpet, but they need someone to replace um, Donovan Smith if we if Brady uh, will play those other two years so he can get to 45, which I believe he can, but he definitely needs that good offensive line. And Tampa Bay, I think they're going to they're gonna continue to invest in that offensive line so that Brady can possibly lead him to a Lombardi. Now with the 27th pick, you got the New York Jets. I have them taking Wyatt Davis from the University of Ohio State. And Wyatt Davis, he um, I think he really helps solidify this Jets offensive line, in my opinion. They're three-fifths of the way done. We've got their franchise left tackle in Mekhi Becton. They have a solid right tackle in George Fant. And they have a nice right guard in Graveland Road. So they need a center and they need a left guard. 
why Davis fills that need at left guard, which is very important for New York. They have a lot of cap space to spend on offensive line in the in the upcoming offseason. The Jets aren't as, as in a bad position as you think, and why Davis would really help keep Zach Wilson upright, who in my opinion has a huge upside for New York. Now with the 28th pick, you got the Pittsburgh Steelers. I have them taking the fifth quarterback in this draft. No, not fifth, the sixth quarterback in the NFL draft, um, Kyle Trask from the University of Florida. Um, I think he played stellar in 2020. He was really contending for the Heisman all year until Mac Jones and Devontae Smith kind of overtook him. And he's kind of a bit mobile. He's a bit mobile, and he's got a solid arm. And I think it's great for him. He'll sit behind Big Ben for a year, and then he could take over in 2021 if Ben uh, ends up retiring. And I think he'll take over a very young, talented uh, Steelers offense with names like Juju Smith-Schuster, Deontay Smith, James Washington, and Chase Claypool. So he won't be put in a bad position at all. Now with the 29th pick, you got the New Orleans Saints. I have them taking Rondell Moore, wide receiver from the University of Purdue. Um, he's very good at running shallow routes for whoever the Saints quarterback may, uh, may be. I think it might be Breeze again. And I think Sean Payton likes to um, emphasize that quick um, passing offense, which I think Rondell Moore would really fit. They still need that wide receiver number two. Trey Quan Smith and Emmanuel Sanders have done a solid job by committee, but they need that true number two. And I think Rondo Moore fits that better than any of the other receivers. Now with the 30th pick in the draft, you have the Buffalo Bills. I have them taking uh, Darion Kendrick from the University of Clemson. And really, um, Buffalo's only weakness is a cornerback to opposite to Tredavious White. And I think Kendrick really fills that need. He's been very good for Clemson all year. Uh, one uh, converted to cornerback and has actually uh, had a very smooth transition. Does need some coaching, but I think he'd be great for Buffalo. Now with the 31st pick, you got the Green Bay Packers. I am taking a linebacker, Zayvon Collins from the University of Tulsa. Um, he's a very good multi-purpose linebacker. The Packers very vehemently need help stopping the run. This is an insurance pick. Again, few weaknesses. Run defense is one of the main ones, and I think Collins would be a very surefire pick for Green Bay. Now with the final pick of this mock draft, you have the Kansas City Chiefs, and I have them taking a interior offensive lineman, the second one, Elijah Vera Tucker from the University of USC. And the Chiefs' offensive line has really struggled in recent games and needs to protect Mahomes at all costs. And I think Vera Tucker, he's played solid for USC, and I think he will really help that. Kansas City definitely needs to um, address them in the offseason if they want to continue a dynasty. But that's it for this mock draft. You enjoyed it again. Make sure to like and subscribe. We really appreciate all the help that we can get. Make sure to follow our socials. We have Instagram and TikTok. And thank you guys for watching. And that's it. Thank you.